One of the things you need to focus on in regards to options trading is capital efficiency. Now, what does that mean, capital efficiency? What that means is that you need to try to get the most out of your money. It means trying to get the most bang for your buck. One of the ways you can make more efficient use of your capital is by trading futures options as opposed to stock options. The reason is futures are a much more leveraged product than stocks, and you get more bang for your buck. You get more potentially more return on your capital by trading futures options rather than stock options. So let me demonstrate the difference between a futures options position and a stock options position in terms of buying power efficiency. So let me go to SPY. Now SPY is an ETF. It's essentially a stock, right? It's an equity. It trades in shares. Options on SPY represent 100 shares of the underlying stock. So imagine I go to the 45-day cycle here in SPY, and I go ahead and sell the at-the-money put. Now, what is my buying power reduction on that SPY at the money put. It is around $11,000. So keep that in mind, that at the money short put is going to cost me $11,000 as far as buying power reduction. Now, as far as credit received, you can see I'm going to receive $1,155 credit for selling that put. So I'm going to receive $1,150 on a buying power reduction of around $11,000. So keep that in mind. Now let's go do an options position on a futures product a similar product. Let's do the ES Futures. The ES Futures is the S&P 500 Futures. So SPY was the S&P 500 ETF. So they're essentially tracking the same underlying index, but you can see that the buying power is going to be vastly different. Now ES is five times the size of SPY. So you would imagine that everything is going to be five times as large. I'm going to receive five times the credit by selling the same at the money put in ES on a buying power reduction of five times the buying power reduction as what I received in the SPY. But let's do that same at the money short put. You can see now I'm going to receive a credit of 118.50. Now the uh, futures multiplier here in ES is 50, meaning everything is multiplied by the number 50. So really it's 50 times 118.25 is actually what I'm gonna receive as a credit. So I'm gonna receive $5,900 essentially in credit, which is about five times what I received in credit on SPY. So that makes sense. But my buying power reduction, is it five times more than the buying power reduction of SPY? Remember, SPY had a buying power reduction of $11,000. My buying power reduction here in the ES futures 10,300. So not only is it not five times as much, it's actually slightly less than that at the money put in SPY. That's crazy, right? One is, that doesn't make any sense because this is a bigger product, a much bigger product than SPY, yet I get a better buying power reduction, right? This is much more leverage. You know, my broker is not having me set aside as much cash for buying power purposes for a much larger position, right? I mean, this is a much more risky position. Potentially, I'm going to make a much bigger reward, again, on about the same buying power reduction. And this is really the beauty of futures options as opposed to stock options. Because of this increased leverage, because you have much less as far as buying power reduction, it really allows you to get a lot greater return on your capital. Because now some of those credits I'm receiving, you know, some of my profits that I'm receiving, but I'm only having to put up a you know, fraction of the same buying power. Again, that's a much greater return on your capital. Now you have to be careful with these short option positions in the futures products because the buying power reduction, even though it seems like it's really nice when you first open the trade, the buying power reduction can change on you. During the life of the trade, the buying power reduction can and probably will change. And in some cases, it's going to change drastically. Just because it only cost me $10,000 to sell that put in ES earlier, let me go sell that same at the money put, just because right now it cost me about 10 grand to sell that put. Well, if ES goes down 10% tomorrow, all of a sudden, this buying power of $10,000, they're going to up that because this put is a much more risky position. Now, all of a sudden, my buying power might be $20,000, $30,000, possibly more. It really depends on how big the move, maybe volatility comes into play. If there's a big volatility spike like we had back on August 5th, you know, the buying power can change in a big way 
on these short options positions on the big futures products, especially like ES or NQ. So don't be surprised if you end up in a situation where you put a bunch of these on, the buying power just explodes on you, and all of a sudden you're using more than 100% of your buying power, which triggers a margin call. And you never want to be in that position. So even though you're getting all of this extra leverage on your futures options positions, you have to be really careful. Don't all of a sudden just you know go crazy selling naked puts in ES or NQ or MES, which is the micro EES. You know, be careful. Yes, you're getting more leverage, but that doesn't mean you should use 50, 60, 70% of your buying power. Don't do that, right? The, give yourself a little room in case buying power really spikes on you. You know, try not to use but about 30 to 40 percent of your buying power. That way, if all of a sudden all of your ES positions, all the buying power, say double, you know, if you were only using 40 percent of your buying power, then you know, if everything doubles, now you're using 80 percent. Still, you're you're under 100 percent, right? So that that's the idea, at least in my mind. I like to be somewhere between 30 to 40 percent of buying power usage as far as a max. If I'm putting on a lot of short options positions in the futures products, because the buying power on those futures options, again, it can really change on you in a hurry. Now, one thing to remember is that buying power only changes on undefined risk strategies. And this is not just with futures options, it's with stock options as well. Buying power changes on undefined risk strategies. On defined risk strategies, you never have to worry about buying power ever changing on you because it's a defined risk strategy. Whatever your max possible loss is on a defined risk strategy, that's always the maximum possible loss. So buying power, yeah, it changes on a naked short put, but if instead I did a put credit spread, then whatever the max loss is, you know, in this case, $337 is the max possible loss on this little put credit spread here, right? That is the max possible loss. It will always be the max possible loss and that will never change. And this is really what you should be doing. If you wanna trade futures options, especially regularly trade these futures options, don't just do naked options. Don't constantly sell naked calls, naked puts, naked strangles. You're going to get run over eventually if all you do is put on strictly undefined risk strategies in the futures products because that buying power can and will explode on you. Occasionally mix in some defined risk strategies. These are much safer plays. You don't have to worry about the buying power on these exploding on you. So, you know, yeah, occasionally sell that short naked put in ES or sell that naked short put in NQ. But maybe the next time you want to play it, sell a put credit spread or a call credit spread or an iron condor or maybe do a butterfly, whatever it is you want to do, you've got to mix and match undefined risk strategies with defined risk strategies. If you do nothing but undefined risk strategies, at least in these futures products, you're going to get run over one day when the big event happens. Now, if you want to learn more about options trading, including my favorite option strategy, which is the wheel strategy, check out my book, The Super Wheel Option Strategy, which is available over on Amazon. You'll find a link to this book in the description below. Also, if you want to help support my work, please consider subscribing to the DT Options Discord server. I actually hold a live chat there every morning for about an hour or so. Every trading day, right when the market opens for the first hour of the market open, typically we're hanging out in the voice channel. We talk about potential trade ideas, what's going on in the market. So please consider subscribing to the DT Options Discord server as well. You'll find a link to it in the description below. Peace, guys.